Hi guys, welcome to this Easy Maths video, and today I want to make a video on the newton raphson method. Now this is the newton raphson formula. We've got x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus the function x of n divided by the derivative of function x of n. Now, this is a formula that Newton came up with to try and find the solutions of any equation. However, this formula doesn't always work. And I'm going to show you towards the end of the video the three main cases for why this doesn't work. But first of all, what I want to do is I want to show you how we can derive this formula using both a visual and an algebraic proof. Then I want to have a look at an example to show you how we can find a solution to an equation that is quite difficult to solve using some of the concepts that we know. Let's first try and derive this formula. So we've got a curve y equals f of x. OK, and first of all, I'm going to draw this curve. So if I draw my y-axis, and then this is my x-axis, let's say that this curve is y equals f of x. And what Newton did is he said, well, I know I'm going to get a solution for x when my curve crosses the, the x-axis, when f of x is equal to 0. So it's going to be at this point here. I don't know where that point is, so let me just take any value along the x-axis. So let's say he took this point here, okay? And if we go down, so this is going to have the x value x of n, and this is going to have the corner x of n function x of n. And then what he did is he differentiated that function to form a tangent at that point, so if I draw a tangent at that point, then what you'll see is my tangent will go through the x-axis at a point which is much more closer to my solution for f of x. Well, let's substitute this next value of x into my formula. So I'm going to call this x of n plus 1. So again, this point is going to have a corner of x of n plus 1 dash f of x of n plus 1. And then if I draw another tangent at that point, as you can see, it will cross the x-axis there. I'll call that x of n plus 2. Each time I substitute um, an x value into my formula that is closer to my solution, and I then differentiate that function, every tangent is going to get closer to my solution. And the more iterations I do, the more accurate my answer is going to be. So Newton came up with a formula based on this idea. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at one tangent. So if we look at our first tangent, where we took the x value x of n, and then the tangent crossed the x-axis at the point x of n plus 1. So if we draw an angle between the tangent and the x-axis, so this angle here, and we'll call it theta, then what you should be able to see is I want to work out the gradient of this tangent. So the gradient is going to be the change in y values divided by the change in x values. So the height of this function is y equals x of n. And then the distance along the x-axis is going to be x of n minus x of n plus 1. But if we think of this as a trig triangle, then what we can say is that tan theta, because tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be opposite is going to be function x of n. And then adjacent is going to be x of n minus x of n plus 1. Then what we can say is that tan theta must be equal to our gradient function for function x of n. Because that's what we're saying. Because if you like, the hypotenuse of this triangle, if we think of it as a triangle, is the same value as our gradient function. So what I can do now is I can replace tan theta with the derivative of x of n. So function x of n, function x of n all divided by x of n minus x of n plus 1. And then what I want to do is I want to rearrange this formula to get x of n plus 1 as the subject. So what I can do is I can multiply both sides of my equation by x of n minus x of n plus 1. So if I do that, I'm going to get x of n minus x of n plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of x of n is equal to function x of n. And then I want to divide both sides by the derivative of x of n. So I'm going to get x of n minus x of n plus 1 is equal to function x of n divided by the derivative of that function. And then again, we want x of n plus 1 as our subject. So what we want to do is we can subtract this term from both sides to bring it over to the left-hand side. And then we can add 
minus x of n plus 1 to both sides. So by doing that, we get x of n plus 1 equals x of n minus function x of n all over the derivative. So let's say we've got function x is equal to 2x minus 1 squared minus e to the power of x. Okay, and this isn't the easiest equation to solve. And what we're told is that x1 is equal to 1.6. So if you like an estimate for what our, for what one of our solutions to this equation could be is 1.6. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute 1.6 into the newton raphson formula. And what that should do is that should give us our next value of x, which is closer to our solution. And the more iterations we do of this formula, basically the formula will converge to the solution for this equation. So what I can do using this formula is I can work out what my next solution of x is going to be. So I'm going to have x of 2 is going to be equal to x1, which is 1.6 minus function x of n. So what I want to do is I want to substitute 1.6 into f of x. So if I write that down here, I'm going to have function 1.6 is equal to 2 times 1.6 minus 1 all squared minus e to the power 1.6. And what I'm going to do is rather than simplifying this, I'm just going to type this all into my calculator. Then let's try and find what the derivative of x of n is when our x value is 1.6. So if we first work out what f dash x is, using the chain rule, we can bring the 2 down. Minus 1 from the power, so we're going to get 2x minus 1, and then we can multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So we're going to multiply this by 2. And then obviously if we differentiate minus e to the x, we're still going to be left with minus e to the x. So this simplifies to f dash x is equal to uh, 4, all multiplied by 2x minus 1 minus e to the x. Yeah, and I'm going to leave it like that. I could expand this bracket out, but I think that's fine as we're just substituting values of x into this equation. So when x is equal to 1.6, we're going to get 4 times... 2 times 1.6 minus 1 and minus e to the power of. Again, I'm going to put that into my calculator. So a quick way I can do this on my calculator is let me set 1.6 as my answer button. And then what I can do is I can type in the newton raphson formula into my calculator. So I can say that answer minus, then I look at f of x. So it's going to be 2 multiplied by answer minus 1 all squared minus e to the power of answer and then that's going to be all divided by this value here but instead of typing in 1.6 i'm going to type in answer so it's going to be 4 multiplied by 2 multiplied by answer minus 1 minus e to the power of answer and then if i hit equals on my calculator i'm going to get an answer of x2 and I'm going to write all the decimal places that show up on my calculator. So I get 1.629382214. Now, if I hit equals again, I'll get my value for x3. And x3 is equal to 1.629053276. And what we want to do is we want to find the most accurate answer to five significant figures. So if I work out what my next x value is going to be, so if I hit equals again, I get 1.629053236. And I'm basically going to keep pressing equals until all the decimal points on my calculator stay the same. So my next x value is going to be 1.629053236. Three, two, three, six. So what you should be able to see on your calculator is that our x value has converged to 1.629053236. So that is as many decimal places that are going to show up on our calculator as possible. So for our answer, we want it to five significant figures. One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be up to here and what we do is rather than calling this root x because we've used x a lot i'm going to call this root alpha and i'm going to say alpha is equal to 1.6291 to five significant figures now let's have a look at how the newton raphson method fails 
So the first way in which it fails is when we end up having a horizontal tangent. And what I mean by that is, let's say we've got the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared. Okay, so if we were going to graph this function, what we can do is we can factorize out x squared. So we're going to get f of x is equal to x squared, and then we're going to get x of minus 2. So if we draw this function, that's our y-axis, this is our x-axis. What's going to happen is the curve is going to go through the origin. It's then going to go through the point where x equals 2. And our curve will look something like this, where that's our origin and that is when x equals 2. And of course what you'll see is we've got two turning points. We've got a turning point here and a turning point here, maximum. And these turning points are of course stationary points. And stationary points are where the gradient of our tangents are equal to 0, right? So if we go back to the formula for the newton raphson method, which is x of n plus 1 is equal to x of n minus function x of n, all over the derivative of x of n. So we want to substitute x equals 2 into this function of x. Well, when x equals 2, that's the value of x at which we have a stationary point. So what's going to happen is f dash x of n is going to be equal to 0, which means that this whole formula is going to break because you're dividing by 0. So that's the first way in which it fails. The second way it fails is when we approximate the wrong root. And what I mean by this is let's say we've got another graph of y equals f of x, but this time our function of x is a parabola. And this parabola has a x-coordinate that is negative and an x-coordinate which is positive. So if you like, our minimum point will be when x is equal to 0 it lies on the y-axis. Let's say this solution of x is x1 and this solution is x2. If I was going to use the newton raphson formula and my estimate for x was going to start up here, but I want the formula to converge to an x value which is negative, then what's going to end up happening is it's going to converge to x2 rather than x1. Because when we take tangents at our first estimated x value, it automatically converges to x2 and then it remains at x2 it doesn't then converge off to x1 so that is the second problem with the newton raphson method if you've got two or more solutions to an equation and you want to try and find a specific solution and you don't really know where that value of x is then the problem is it can end up taking you to another solution that you didn't want in the first place so that's something that we've got to be a bit careful of and the next situation in which it fails is when you have something known as an oscillating sequence. Now this only occurs when you've got particular functions and we'll talk about the types of functions where this situation occurs. So let's say f of x equals x cubed minus 5x. Okay so again we can factorize this out so we're going to have f of x is equal to x all multiplied by x squared minus 5. And if we were to draw this function, it's going to look roughly like this, where it's going to cross the x-axis at the point 0. It's going to have another root, which is root 5, and it's going to have another root of negative root 5. And what's going to happen is, let's say our first x value is 1. Okay, so let's search roughly here. So x of 0 equals 1. So that's going to be the first point that we're going to test for. So if we use the newton raphson formula, which is x of n plus 1 equals x of n minus function x of n over the derivative of x of n, then we can say that x1 is equal to 1 minus, we substitute 1 into f of x, we're going to get 1 cubed minus 5 multiplied by 1. So that's going to be minus 4. 
over the derivative of f of x. So if we work out the derivative of f of x, we're going to get 3x squared minus 5. Then if we substitute 1 into 3x squared minus 5, we're going to get minus 2. And what ends up happening is x1 is equal to 1 minus negative 4 divided by negative 2. Well, that's 2, so you get 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Then let's see what happens when we try and work out our next value of x. So x2 will be equal to minus 1 minus f of x when x is equal to minus 1. So we're going to have minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1. Then minus 1 minus 5 multiplied by minus 1. So we get minus 1 plus 5, which is 4. And then over the derivative of f of x when x equals minus 1. So we're going to have minus 1 squared, which is 1. 1 times 3, which is 3. And then 3 minus 5, which is minus 2. And when we simplify this, we get x2 is equal to minus 1 plus 2. And that equals 1. Well, what happens is our first value of x was 1. Our next value of x was minus 1. And our next value after that was 1 again. So as you can see, every value of x that we test for, it keeps oscillating between 1 and negative 1. And this happens because this point here at the origin is our POI, our point of inflection. And it's basically where the function can't decide whether it's got a positive or negative gradient. So it ends up oscillating between the two values. So that is the other way in which it fails. Thanks for watching the video guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, I've also left a link in the description to my website and you can also check out any other videos from my YouTube channel on this page.